we're talking about this Colorado game. Number 18, Kansas State at uh, Colorado, 10.15 p.m. Eastern time on ESPN. And the storylines to nail this game, Colorado has an opportunity for a major statement in the Big 12 because last year had a lot of hype, not much substance. Again, it was better than what they had. 1-11 record the year before. They went 4-8, and eight, which is still a big improvement, but not much substance for at least all the hype that they had. But this year, Dawn, they already have as many wins as last year and seem to have significantly improved in the trenches, which was really their kryptonite last year. So you have a more physical team to go along with one of, if not the best quarterback in the country in Shador Sanders, one of, if not the best player in the country in Travis Hunter. You said it, and I am kind of agree with you, Colorado can actually compete with for a conference title and a playoff berth and what's a wide open Big 12. But this week specifically is going to really show that because they play Kansas State, who is not the highest ranked Big 12 team in the AP poll, but they are the highest ranked team in PFS power rankings right now, which don't really uh, take into account resume. It does take into account resume, but also just how strong the team is and how well you're grading out. So uh, it's a really interesting game to show Okay, Colorado is really impressive so far, but now it's the big boys now. Now it's Kansas State. Uh, how real are those conference title hopes for the Buffaloes? This is this is the week. It's the best way I can put this, right? After the win against UCF and a big win against UCF, 48-21, to 21, right? I said they can win the Big 12, right? This is, uh, this is, or they can compete for a Big 12 title, right? This is the game, if they win this game, where you go, oh, they will compete for a Big yep. 12 title. It's this game against this this style. And I know UCF came into last the, the last game two weeks ago um, leading the nation in rushing yards. I actually think K-State's unit is harder to defend. I agree. Uh, with, with Avery Johnson and Dylan Edwards and DJ Giddens, this is the ultimate test for, for, this, for this Colorado defense. And I, I'll tell you what, just – you thought Folsom Field was electric on opening night or in last year's last year's uh, you know the Colorado State game. This is this is going to be a you talk about environments. We, we got some environments this week between you got Austin Stadium, you've got Death Valley, you've got West Va, you've got Red River rivalry. I, you know BYU great environment, but this environment in Colorado this is about to be nuts. I, I don't know what ticket prices are going for. I don't know what types of celebrities are going to be at this game. This is this is the game now where you go, okay, yeah, they're in Big 12 contention. It, it, it's the game. And even if they play it close because they don't have a conference loss yet either, right? The loss to Nebraska, not a thing. So it's it's this is the measuring stick now because K-State competes every single year. They do. And, and now you're talking about – and K-State too, on their end. Oh, yeah. They already have a conference loss, mm-hmm. right? They lost that game to BYU. You get a second conference loss this early in the year – you got, you're going to have a hard time clawing back, and we're going to have real questions about K-State. This is a, a, just a massive, massive game, and we've got a ton of massive games here in the Big 12, but this is as big as any of them. Absolutely. So, Dolan, you have the Kansas State offense, which I agree with you. I, I know UCF maybe stats-wise is better rushing numbers, but I think K-State does what UCF does, which is a better level, honestly. So what should we be looking out for for this Kansas State offense, specifically the run game against this Colorado defense? So the first thing on that is I, I think – H. Avery Johnson and K.J. Jefferson are two different types of runners, right? Yes. K.J. is 245, 250, wants to run you over. He can run, but Avery's got a level of speed that's a real problem, like track-level speed, six, 60, 70 yard, 60, 70 yard runs. He can do that. We've seen him go for 50-plus several times in his career already. He gets loose, he's gone. It's, it's not like KJ where you can catch him and maybe he trucks one of your guys at 15 and you live to play the next day. You lose Avery Johnson, he's gone. I actually think of those three guys, Avery Johnson's the biggest problem. Yeah. Let me get into the Colorado side of it. You, you Every week you ask me, you go, Dalton, which side of the ball you want, right? And, and, and every week we get a Colorado game, you go, okay, do you want Shadour and Hunter this week or what? You want, <laughs> you, do you want the actual flashy part? And I go, no, give me the defense. Give me this defense because it's the reason – that they're four and one. The defense. I know Shadour is one. Of, I think he's the best quarterback in the country. I know Travis Hunter is probably the best player in the country. But their defense as a whole is the reason they're winning now. Right, thirteenth in the country in run D grade right now. Thirteenth. Uh, never in my life preseason if you would if you would have told me, hey Colorado week seven they're going to be thirteenth in run D grade. I would call you nuts. They were the eleventh worst last year. Right. They're linebackers. I've talked about Nakai Greenhill. I've talked about Levante Bentley. One of the best units in the country. Their linebacker, Rundy Grade, is eighth best in the country. Rushing yards before contact per attempt, just one yard. That's a top 25 mark. Top 15 in EPA per rush allowed. This is the, this is the week. If this Rundy 
is as legit, again, as they showed against UCF and they've shown for most of the beginning of this season outside the first week, but even then they kind of struggle with quarterback run. Big deal in this game with Avery Johnson. My, my thing is I'm getting kind of curious here with Robert Livingston. I'm like, oh, how, how good is this guy? Because – you were killing him after the North Dakota State game. You I was covering the same covering cover one every single play. It seemed like I know. And here we go. You're you're, yeah. re- you're ready for this? Okay. So that's the thing. And yeah. they and they have great corners, right? You have Travis Hunter, obviously. You have Preston Hodge in the slot. McKinney's pretty good, right? Yeah. And, and I get it. You want to play man coverage, and sometimes. So here's the thing against UCF, and, and part of, part of this is they got ahead and they could sit back a bit. But I talked about. The cover one, the man coverage, a single high, notorious since last year of single high stuff. And I go, like that week one game, I said, okay, they have a new DC, but they're doing the same things. Like, okay, what? What's going on here? They go into this UCF game, and things change. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, after running the second highest rate of cover one through all their games before that in the country, I forget if it was Illinois or Purdue, somebody ahead of them like that. This game against UCF came out and ran 55% cover two. Wow. They're getting too high, and they still managed UCF's run game from too high sets, Some sometimes a little more five-man D-line with, with Bentley or Hill Green behind it, messing around a little bit, but Travis Hunter's interception in that game, cover two, playing the flat and cover two. There's, if they start doing this, I got some theories on this, okay? One is Livingston just trusts these linebackers and the front seven or six-plus Preston Hodge in the slot – to defend the run, and they don't need extra safety help, okay? Two, maybe, because he was under Lou Anarumo for a while, maybe he's starting to get this week-to-week, because Lou Anarumo is is notorious for being one of the best game planners week-to-week in the NFL, right? Maybe it's a a week-to-week adjustment of like, hey, you know, okay, maybe this week, maybe too high, because there's some, you know, and Anarumo's done this even to Lamar Jackson with the Ravens, where it sounds funky, but sometimes – those offenses are so used to playing against single high, whereas when they get too high and they're trying to run into it and then they got safeties coming in the alley and things like that, it's a different look, right? Maybe you got something from Lou Anarumo. Or theory number three, I'm just throwing conspiracies out there keep, now. Keep going. You know who's on their coaching staff? Who? Warren Sapp. Ah. Maybe Warren Sapp brings it back 20 years and he goes to Coach Prime and he goes to Robert Livingston and goes – Eh, try a little Tampa too this week. Yeah. Maybe. A little bit, right? I'm just throwing theories out there. All I know is they came out with any one or all of those theories and played a ton of too high against UCF, and they messed around with the fronts a little bit, and it worked. And if you can defend elite run games like that or like K-State, and you can do it from too high looks, you've got a huge advantage now. You got a huge advantage on top of even if they break one, you've got two safeties back there. But now you're set in coverage. You can mix it up some. Sometimes, look, I'll be honest with you, Colorado is going to feel like they could play man coverage against K State. Yeah. K State does not have elite receivers. Avery Johnson's not an elite drop back passer. They get in obvious situations. I guarantee you'll probably you will probably see a whole lot of press man and go and they're going to go throw it at these guys. We dare you, right? Yep. And that's what hurt them. Even against BYU, they couldn't do it, right? K State they don't want to drop back and fall behind in this game, but. I'm now I'm curious. I'm like, oh, now I've got Robert Livingston mixing things up on the back end. Before it was just like, okay, they're getting better in the front end. There's more talent. They're getting better. They do a great job keeping contain. They do a great job filling gaps. If he's trusting those guys now, and now he can start playing around on the back end. And Shiloh Sanders, I believe, is going to be back this week. So that's just another piece to add to the back end. And now we got a situation. I'm telling you because this this is the week. This is I know I said UCF was the week. And it was because they blew out UCF. That's a level up if you're blowing out a team like that on the road, cross country also, two time zones yep. at least. This is the week. And if their run defense is as good as it's been and they can get in two high looks and mix up coverages, and because, and, look, Travis Hunter in zone coverage is unfair too. I yep. mean, his reactions to the ball and his hands and everything, we, we know what he can do. We saw it in that game, striking the Heisman pose and everything. Robert Livingston, if he's about to get on a burner – messing around now with all the talent he has uh, on this defense this is going to get fun i can't wait i can't wait and playing keeping contained against kansas state is critical in this one because you got a speedy quarterback in avery johnson a speedy running back in dylan edwards who's making uh 
playing his old team in Colorado, and, which can be and really fun. DJ and Gid- then DJ, DJ Giddens ain't slow. No, he ain't no. slow either. He's a little bit bigger, and he's, he's more physical than I think Dylan Edwards and Avery Johnson are, but he's still an elite, elite running back. He's the best running back on the team, honestly. So, yeah, that you got to keep contained. you got to stop the run game. And outside of the ball, Dawn, so physicality for Colorado on defense, and once again, physicality in Colorado on offense is the key to this game, I think. Can Colorado give Shador Sanders enough time to operate? I think – Colorado's season is going to go as far as the run defense and as far as the offensive line allows them to go because their front seven like you said is flipped from a major weakness last year to a major strength while Sanders the receiving core the secondary this all remains strong they, just like last year it was, it was strong last year it's strong this year the offensive line still has its issues they're 84th right now highest graded unit in the country they've allowed a pressure on over 35 percent of their dropbacks is 108th in the country they've allowed a sack on 8.1 percent of their dropbacks is 114th in the country and then you look at the kansas state side of it kansas state defensively is 25th in pressure rate at 38 percent and their 16 sacks are top 25 mark in college football what i'll say though kansas state's pressures this year a lot of them have come unblocked or in cleanup situations. And we look at the pass rush win rate, which pass rush win rate is basically, do you beat the guy blocking you? Doesn't matter if you get a pressure, doesn't matter if you get a sack, just do you beat the guy blocking you? Kansas State's 91st in the country in pass rush win rate this year. So those pressure numbers aren't as indicative of how good of a pass rushing team Kansas State is this year. They're not really beating the guys one on one. And really, if you look at their blitzing and sack and, and stunt numbers, they don't really blitz that much. They don't stunt that much either. So this Colorado offensive line is like, okay, just don't allow unblocked guys to come through. And just win your one on one assignments because you're not going to have them with no stunts happening either. And Shador Sanders, for him as well, is like, okay, get rid of the football. Don't let them get, you know, clean up pressures either, right? Because that's where Kansas State thrives. So if they do just enough, Don, I don't think there's a single secondary in college football that can shut down Shador Sanders and these weapons. So if you give Shador Sanders time against this defense, he's going to carve him up, I think, honestly, because he's that good, and the receivers with Travis Hunter and all of them are that good as well. So really, once again, I feel like every single Colorado preview, and I hope Colorado fans don't get sick of it, we talk about the run defense, and we talk about the offensive line giving Shador Sanders time. That really is what it is. It's just all that happen- needs to happen for Colorado to win these ball games. So I think, once again, the biggest thing to watch for Colorado offensively is can this offensive line give one of if not the best quarterback in the country enough time to carve up the Kansas State defense I I think you um I think you mentioned something very important there and it's something I talked about before the BYU game when we previewed K-State BYU can't K-State doesn't they don't blitz they just don't they send four and they play their coverages and they're just gonna they're gonna let it ride they're just gonna play their cards straight up And, and I think that's big now maybe this week they break the tendency Right, and you go okay. They got to come out blitzing Shadur because, uh, again, I, I think he's the best quarterback in the country. I do, and I know Jalen Milrow's been great. I know Cam Ward's been great with the comebacks and all, but Shadur, so clean too. He's only got two two turnover worthy plays. He, do, he doesn't turn the ball over. I think he has fifteen big time throws to two turnover worthy plays. I, I think it's QB one in the draft. I, I would take him right this one. minute. Yeah, I, th- I think he's at least at the very least what you say. I think he's the most ready to start in the NFL oh, right yeah. now. Just the way he processes defenses. But yeah, I mean, is K State going to break the tendencies because they have a very low pass rush grade, like you mentioned, pass rush win rate? If they don't, and he just gets to stand there. Well, that's your own choice. Good luck. I mean, because this is they, – they got weapons. It's Hunter. It's Wester. It's Horn. It's Shepard. It's now that maybe they're starting to get the run game going. They did a little bit against UCF. Um, this is this is a task, and I think it's, it's very much a choice if you're going to just send four in some basic manner against Shador Sanders. Definitely. And Dalton, not only that, I mean, I said I don't think anyone, any secondary can cover Shador Sanders and his weapons one-on-one. Kansas State is 91st in coverage grade this year. So it's not even like they have an elite secondary to even bother them either. So if you give him time back there, that's how he's going to win. And that's how Colorado is going to win this game. So ultimately, Dalton, will you appease our best fan base that we have and pick Colorado to win this game? Or... Do you think this kind of magical run for the Buffaloes ends hey, uh, against an elite team in Kansas hey, the State? Peop, the, peop, the great people in Manhattan, Kansas. That, that's, They've been good that's to us, too. Rabid fan base, They've been too. good to oh, us, too. Listen, yeah. this is a huge game both ways. And actually, one, one of my one of my best friends went to K-State. We're K- our favorite child. Right one, one of my best friends went to K-State. And he's I'm sure I'm sure he's going to get on me for this prediction. But look, if, if K-State, let's start with K-State real quick. If K-State is going to win this game, what do they have to do? Just run the ball. Run the ball, get ahead. Yep. There, I don't think there's a team more dependent on the game script 
and scoring first than K State. They they can win. They yeah they can go in there and win this game the way they run the ball and the way and the way they can just bother you. Avery Johnson. Avery Johnson very well could come out first play and, and eighty yard run. He can do that sure. But Colorado, we already talked about best quarterback in the country. I don't know if any team. I know they have the highest run D grade in the Big Twelve right now. I don't know. I, they may ha- they may have the best run defense in the Big Twelve. We're going to find out this week. And, and the way you beat them, like you mentioned, you have to pressure Shadur. Yeah. You have to you have to get there before he can come in and and, and just and just shred you and on sack the, him on too. the back. Yeah, you have because he's get good him under down. pressure too. I mean, he's one, and he's also you have to just keep at it because he's won games where he's been sacked like eight times. Yeah, like so. This is just those are the things Colorado needs those three things quarterback run d we'll see about that one and pass protection and honestly two of those three things look really good for them in this game and i think one from the third one the run defense from what we saw against ucf i think they can at least compete again this is not about holding k-state to 50 yards rushing this is about holding them to the same roughly what was it 180 or 190 they held ucf to yeah. you hold case they killed ucf so even more than that you could say you you I, I, it, going into the ucf game i said 250 yeah, you hold. I think it's same thing. You hold them under two fifty. I think you can win. You hold them to one eighty again. It's a wrap. Yeah, I, I think K State is going to score some points. I do think they lean more into their identity. I think their defense is better than UCF's. I've got Colorado thirty five twenty eight. I think I think this home environment. I think Shadur Sanders and K State's lack of a pass rush. If K State falls behind early, two scores, let's say 10, 14 points. I think this game's done. Oh yeah, Colorado falls behind ten nothing early. I still feel pretty good about him. Yeah. Right. I, I go. Okay. Then Shadur's got to. He's just got to do it, and and he certainly can. I, I think there's more scenarios actually where Colorado wins this game, and, and I think if K State doesn't pull out ahead and establish the dominance that UCF really didn't establish early in their game, then it, it could be. I, I don't think it'll be the blowout. It was. It, it's not going to be the blowout. It was because K State's I think more sound on defense than oh, yeah. UCF, but. This is, is, I think there's more things that go Colorado's direction here, especially at home. I got them 35 28. And I have them 30 27. I have Colorado winning this game as well. I, I think, like you said, Kansas State is just is who they are. There's really not much variance with that in, team. In, in good and bad ways. In good and bad. We, like, we know exactly who K State is, win or lose. Oh, this, easily. they are probably, I talked about Utah being the most unpredictable team in college. I think K State is the most predictable oh, team dude, in college football. We, when they got blown out by BYU, we were like, that yeah. Was, yeah, it was it was like shocking to see it so dominant, but it was just who they were. That's how it could go. That's, that's the other side of the sword. But when they dominated Oklahoma State, it wasn't like it wasn't like we were all like, oh, wait a minute, Kansas doesn't know. That's just who they are too. So it's it's kind of the, like I said, their most predictable team in the country. If you slow down that run game, and I love what Cotter has been doing in the run D this year, and then you have it turns into a game where all of a sudden you get into third and long with Kansas State, and then it turns into Avery Johnson against that secondary, and more specifically, Avery Johnson against Shorter Sanders. Shorter Sanders winning that battle 10 times out of 10 as a passer right now. And I think Shorter Sanders and Travis Hunter are going to continue to show why they're two top 10 picks in the 2025 NFL Draft. I got Colorado winning this game 30-27, to and I got Colorado establishing themselves as not only a Big 12 contender, but one of the Big 12 favorites after this game as well. They are a for-real team in this conference. So both of us, once again, picking Colorado to beat Kansas State also at Colorado too. That place is going to be rocking. A big, big uh, home environment for, for Colorado nice. for in Boulder. Uh, we're very excited for that late night game, and we're very excited for what is going to be an amazing Week Seven of college football. 